um, Mark. Um, can you just uh, maybe talk to the selection of your team? You know what? What were the sort of abiding philosophies? I know you touched on it. Um, just seen said earlier in the week, but um, how did you balance? I guess the the need to give guys some game time who haven't had it versus, I guess, as you touched on, look at some contenders maybe who also you know also you, you uh, merited some game time. How, how did you balance that for the selection? Uh, look, it's um, look selection is. You know, we've had two weeks off, so it's going to be three weeks between games. We've had some players who didn't play against South Africa, or either one or two. Um, so, you know, we're really cognizant of making sure we don't have players that have too big a gap between games, because then they sort of lose the lose the ability to really put their hand up later in the tour. So that's that's been a key factor in this group. You know, a number of guys who have joined us, you know, late in the tour or, or joined us here, we're, we're obviously keen to get them on the park with some game time and it's also uh, some guys that were out and impacted a little bit on injury in, in the rugby championship, you know, hence the, the likes of an Ethan de Grook in his first start is um, it's a key game for people like him. So, you know, it's a, a bit of a mix and match of reasons, but overall, you know, pretty delighted with the team. Uh, they're, they're pretty excited about this game. We've got a big group, Fuzzy, so I'll just I have one more before I pass on. Um, you mentioned um, you would include some players, you know, likely to be contending um, uh, for starts against Wales in a week's time. Is it fair to say the likes of Richie, Dalton, even Will Jordan come into that category? Are they are those guys, you know, who can enhance their claims um, on Saturday at FedEx? Yeah, well, you you know I won't go into any specifics in that, but you know there's a clear opportunity for everyone, really, and it's um. But um, I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to figure out who you think's more likely. But you know the thing is we've, you know, we're, we're coming off a loss. It um, it hurt. We we're now going into a game that um, you know we're we're clearly going as clear favourites. But what what's important for us is the quality of our game and. You know, in many ways, new combinations, time off. Um, there's plenty of excuses for a bit of rust, so I guess we expect a little bit of settling in period. But over at, by the end of the game, we, we need to make sure that we're nailing our performance at the level. And and then by doing that, I guess we've got individuals who, who put their hand up. Cool. Thanks, uh, Mark. Ollie, I'll jump in next. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Hey, Fozzie, how are you? Ollie, good, thanks. I'm um, just wondering how... Uh... How you guys have gone about this week, a week which has been quite different for a lot of these guys, full of emotion, obviously, given the, the tragic news at the start of the week. Has it been a, a difficult week from a management perspective to, to balance and make sure that guys are in the, the kind of the right headspace to, to firstly train and then be able to play as well? Uh, look, yeah, look, yes and no. It's not a difficult week to manage because it's there's, there's a sense of you just got to react to... To, to, you know, the team's reacted to the news and it's um, and no one's excited or, well, you know, it's impacted on everyone when, when people lose a mate and particularly someone who's, who's really close to a whole lot of these players. So, um, you know, we're feeling for the family back back at home particularly and, and you know, we're, we're a small part of the rugby fraternity that's all hurting but in our own way it's, I guess, been away from home has impacted a lot on the players so getting them together and just allowing them to go through a process together, I think, has been key. So, you know, they've largely led that. Um, I think there's a real determination to 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 make sure that we we harness that that, that energy and, and use it on Saturday. And just lastly, for me, um, it's probably been a, a long few weeks for George Bridge after um, that the first test against the, the Springboks. How have you seen him kind of bounce back in, in training uh, after that that first test against the Box and what are you hoping to see from him on Saturday, Sunday morning? Oh, George is a quality rugby player and it uh, kind of didn't go his way in, in that test and that happened. So, you know, it's like every player, you he, he's he's gone through a full analysis and, you know, he's got some things that he knows he, he is normally very, very good at that didn't go that well for him. So he's worked hard on that space and, you know, the key thing is he's just got a clear head and trust himself. He, he, you know, one game doesn't make someone a bad rugby player, and um, we've got a lot of faith in them. Cool, thanks, Ollie. Chris Reeve. 
Thanks, Joe. Hey, Ian. Um, you mentioned earlier in the week that a group will be going over to Wales before um, this weekend's game. Can you just uh, talk to who's in that group and how you sort of came to the decision to send those guys over first? Uh, mainly flights, Christopher, because we've, we can't get the whole squad over on Saturday night, so we've had to send 11 players over a day early. That's the, the number one and only reason with why we're doing it. Um, international flights are a little bit harder to organise than what they used to be. So um, concerning who, who goes over, um, I, I probably well, I won't go through the list because my memory may not get it all right, but we'll, we'll send something out probably in the morning. I mean, can you just talk a little bit to Ethan De Groot, like you say, he's making his first start this week. Um, it's a pretty big opportunity for a young guy like that. Yeah, no, fantastic. He's a, he, you know, I've seen him grow through this period. As he went through a period of frustration when he couldn't play, particularly when he couldn't train with his neck. He keeps wanting to jump in there and do stuff. But there's nothing, you certainly can't question his attitude and desire to play. So, um, and like all players, when they're coming back from injuries, they get a bit fidgety and they just want to play. But he's he's trained well, prepared well, excited about him. He's, um, you know, very much, well, I think, a player for the future and very strong and, and he just can't wait to get out there. So kind of felt it was better to stick, give him the starting jersey. There's a lot of energy there and I think he did sort of get pretty fidgety on the bench because he's waited a long time for it, but thoroughly deserves a, a start. Thanks, Chris. Thank Jamie, want to go next? Hey Joe, uh, hi Ian. Okay, mate. Um, uh, just on Sam Kane, um, obviously you had to uh, make a decision around the captaincy there. How did he respond to that news? Uh, is he, he, he all on board with uh, giving Samuel Whitelock the captaincy there? No, oh, look, we've spoken about that a long time ago, really. it's um, He's been out for a long time and and so yeah it's been very clear and he's very yeah, he, it's the right decision for him and right decision for us so he's 100 percent behind that and uh gives him time and space to to get through and get his own game going and you know like he's come off just one hit at heartland which which he loved and we're very appreciative for that game time but um now it's a matter of getting him into a groove at, at test level and getting him really confident so the next two to three weeks are about getting him just to see how far we can progress him. So in the meantime, he's still a big part of our leadership group. He, he's still contributing at the same sort of level. And um, and uh, and I think him having the space just to get his own game right is the right thing. Right, and just one more. Um, the last time uh, you guys played in the United States uh, was a loss against Ireland. Has that been brought up at all? Is that, is that motivating you guys at all, perhaps, so, you know, Put in a big performance swing in it all? No, not really. The first time I got brought up was just then, Jamie. So, right. no, that's, you have to apologise. History is history. But uh, really got nothing to do with this game. From our perspective, we're just excited about the, the this five-game tour and, and having a chance to play here in Washington. I think it's um, great. And also climbing out of a sort of a, you know, on the back of the rugby championship, having two weeks in... in, in in Australia without playing and then coming into this game I think it's going to be ideal preparation for us for the next four weeks after that. Thank you. Cool, Elliot? Thanks Joe, hi Ian. Uh, uh, just on Josh Lord, you spoke about him when you first selected him but um, what have you seen since he arrived into camp to give you the confidence he's ready to make his all blacks debut? Yeah look he's just, he's, he's settled in really really well. He's um, he just seems to be a day at a time type man, and, and I love that. He just seems to focus on what he needs to do today. We're not trying to overcomplicate things. He's um, rooming with Sammy Whitelock, which is probably a good place for him to start in terms of learning, learning the game. And um, you know, he, he's he's a confident young man. You know, clearly it'll be a it'll be an exciting, nervous time for him when he when he pulls on that black jersey and. You know, gets a chance to run out, but um, you know what we've seen is a someone who's who we feel is right to deal with that. And you know, this tour is we, we selected on the basis of you know just to start working with them and, and seeing where where you know where we feel we can get them, and, and we've seen nothing to, uh, to contradict that. And just lastly, from me, um, the United States. What do you expect from them this weekend? It almost seems like they've gone a bit backwards and. The rugby world losing to Uruguay a few weeks ago, not qualifying directly for the World Cup. So, so what do you expect from the US? Oh, look, they'll be stung from that because if you looked at a couple of their performances in July, you know they were very, very competitive, and um, 
and you know, so I know they'll be disappointed with that. But I think that's, I've, you know, from all we hear is they're putting that to one side and the chance to play in their in their own country in a pretty special stadium that they don't normally play in, in front of a big crowd and to and to represent their country here against us is, is very much a motivating factor. So, you know, we're expecting a very, sort of an invigorated Eagles team. You know, we expect them to carry hard and, and play without a commitment, which you kind of always expect out of the state. So, you know, I think they'll be really combative in that space. Cool, Lynn, do you want to jump in next? Yeah, thank you. Hi, Ian. Um, just yeah. talking about your midfield, where you've obviously had a lot of injury problems this year. How good is it to see Braden in all back, and how much does he feature in your future thinking? Um, well, the fact he's in our squad and is, is many features, so it's um, you know, and, and now it's his first start at centre. So I think we just look at the short term for him, and it's. Um, you know, my expectations is that, you know, he's been with us for a while now and he hasn't had a lot of game time, but his his body's now looking 100%. He looks instinctive on the training ground and really just, you know, I expect a few nerves from him in his first start with the All Blacks, but, you know, we, we, we've always recognised him in the last couple of years and, and it's good to have him for a period of time that we can get, have a good chance to see how he fits in. You know, he's... He's looked good at centre. He's also looked good on the wing. We still see him as a, as as uh, covering both areas, and and he's looking fast. So and that's one of his key attributes. Cool. Thank you. That's great. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, and, um, yep. Just a quick one, I guess, in a match like this, um, uh, where the, the game could open up and the sport could sort of, sort of blow out, players can become a bit, a bit individualistic at times from a from a team perspective, what do you, what specific aspects do you, do you want to see and get out of this match? Oh, look, we've, we're combining what we think uh, we need to do against USA and and a couple of things that we've learned about ourselves against South Africa to try to come up with some key focal points and you know how we how we control the breakdowns one and and making sure that we bring an intensity and, a, and an accuracy to that space because we. We certainly got counter rucked a little bit against South Africa, which was frustrating in that second test. So there, there's a few things like that, Liam, that, that we've we've highlighted specifically, and and more in the micro part of our game, and 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 the balance of the game. We've tried to keep quite simple because of the number of guys that are coming back from lengthy periods off, and and who are, who are, or who are joining the team for the first time. So sorry, the music man just walked past me. So. Um, so we're not trying not to overcomplicate the the complexities of our game with this one, but we but it's certainly the the breakdown is one area, and and perhaps getting a little bit more discipline on on um, on our offside line. You know, we look at South Africa, we we were actually onside, but we got penalised four times for jumping the gun when nines were dumbing the ball and dumbing the pass, and it's. Uh, it was a little bit sloppy and it, and, it, and it hurt us. So there's things like that that we're trying to tidy up. Yes. Thank you. Alex, And um, first test start for Richie Mwanga in two months. Uh, last play against the Wallabies in Auckland. Um, given his lengthy spell outside of the team and Bowden Barrett's performances in the rugby championship, what are you sort of expecting from Richie this weekend? Yeah, well, I mean, clearly, the, you know, he, he wasn't with us for most of the rugby championship because it was of a birth of a child, so that was that reason, just to make sure we're clear on that. And, um, and you know, he had a good week going to the South Africa too, and um, and he would have learnt some lessons coming off the bench in that last quarter of that game. So, um, you know, I just expect him to be Richie, really. You know, he's... Um, oh, he, he hasn't lost any fitness. He, he's um, he's trained well, and and I know that he he's looking forward to actually getting some time again under his belt and getting back on the park. So he's like a number of guys that, for different reasons, haven't been haven't been with us. And coming back in always takes a little bit of time, but he's had a bit more time because he already had that South African test. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cool. Uh, we got any other last questions before we let Fozzie go? I do real quickly. My name's Kristen Powers. I'm actually from Washington, D.C. Welcome, ABC7 here. Um, how are you feeling? 
being, you know, in this area, you had mentioned playing at a special stadium. I know everyone in our area is ecstatic for this game. They're expecting very high numbers and turnouts to be at this stadium. After such a year of, you know, the pandemic, different protocols, not being able to travel and feel that energy, how are you feeling being here about to play a, play a game that I know people here are very excited to welcome you, even though we should be rooting for USA. We're pretty excited. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming on the uh, on the Zoom. It's um, good to hear from you. It's uh, look, we've loved it here. It's uh, no, I don't think a lot of us really knew what to expect. But um, well, we've got a beautiful city, and you know, even though we've been hotel bound like most of the time, we have been able to get out and about and have some early morning walks around some of your monuments and and get a feel for the place. So we certainly sense that and. We know a number of people here from the rugby fraternity. Um, in fact, the, the coach of your old glory team is a ex Waikato man. So we know the feeling locally is, is pretty excitable about this this game. And for many of us, you know, playing in the stadium and in a pretty iconic ground, it, it's going to be, th these are the things that the guys really, really enjoy. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited about the game. Can't wait and uh, very appreciative of the, the support and the, and the welcoming we've been getting. Thank you so much. Thanks.